Thank you, Pak Kuntoro. Your Excellencies, civil society leaders, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My father gave me only one piece of serious advice when I was growing up. He said, son, avoid three things and you'll be fine. Fire, deep water, and the government. <laughs> Over time, I have come to appreciate the wisdom of my father's warning. For too many people, government is something to be feared, precarious and predatory, that uses its power to harass, that cares little about your well-being. The most insidious effect of this experience for people is that it dulls people's aspirations of what government can be. We often expect little of government and get little back in return. The premise of the Open Government Partnership is that we can break this vicious cycle by demonstrating a different kind of governance where government is transparent about its dealings, genuinely seeks people's ideas, and works with citizens to get things done. And by so doing, slowly, we restore and reinvent the trust and accountability that is so crucial to a healthy democracy. So how is OGP faring? Well, it's mixed. There are some country commitments that are not very meaningful. Other countries have good commitments, but have failed to deliver. The challenge of open washing is real, and the road we have to travel is still long. But the truly remarkable story here is not that. It is a different story. It is the story of how committed civil servants and citizens have seized the OGP platform to get traction and deliver in less than three years on some 400 substantial commitments and made serious headway on another 200. Under any metric, this is huge progress. In my view, the OGP's norm-shifting role may be even more important than long-term concrete delivery. The United Kingdom, for example, is trying open policymaking. Mexico speaks of co-governing with civil society. South Africa is developing a bato pele, or people first, consequences framework for public servants. It is not that any of these have been fully achieved or will be anytime soon. Their significance lies in how they are shifting deep underlying norms of governance, compelling governments to make such commitments, shifting the frame of debate and negotiation. The OGP momentum has also helped spur progress elsewhere as well, such as the G8's attempt to reduce tax evasion through a registry of beneficial ownership, or the Open Contracting Partnership, a new initiative that hopes to disclose public contracts in the world that are worth over $9 trillion each year. Both of these are radical norms. If successful, their impact could be huge, saving taxpayers billions of dollars. My friend, Minister Francis Maud, likes to say, transparency is an idea whose time has come. I, wouldn't, I couldn't agree more. But the time does not come on its own. It is wrought through painstaking efforts of citizens and reformers in government who keep at it day in, day out. Indeed, if there is one thing that I've learned, it is that OGP cannot realize its promise without struggle. The first struggle is of fashioning a meaningful collaboration between civil society and government. It resists the cynicism that says this is how things are and you cannot change them. It goes beyond easy stereotypes of government as callous and corrupt or of civil society as entitled and unfair. It avoids the temptation to evade argument by questioning the credibility of the speaker. It seeks conversation and understanding, knowing that no one has a monopoly on good ideas. It is as pragmatic as it is principled, having understood that people have only so much time for visions and just speaking truth to power. People want to get things done. Results, decent work, bread on the table, safety from violence, respect when they go to the clinic or to the school. The second struggle is to think hard about what works. Often things that appear obvious are anything but. Countries have invested billions of dollars in basic education, but the evidence shows that children are not learning. 
that too many children graduate without the ability to read and to count. Or take graft. Dozens of countries have passed laws, set up anti-corruption commissions, and done capacity building, despite little evidence that these things actually work. Open government understands that good intentions are not enough. Effective policymaking requires an appreciation for rigor, evidence, feedback, and adaptation, rather than a dogmatic fidelity to a linear five-year plan, or what the anthropologist James Scott calls seeing like a state. It means being open to ideas that challenge your core beliefs, to have the confidence to change your mind, and to challenge the inertia of habit and vested interests. The third struggle is for inclusion. For long, kings ruled, pillaged, and enslaved at whim, and the best citizens could hope for was to be left alone. The wave of democratization in the past century has made it possible to conceive a different vision of a government of, by, and for the people. But we would be blind not to see how our action and inaction let so many perish from the earth today. How can we not be haunted by the images of hundreds of migrants crammed in dinghies craving for a better life, being turned away, and in effect, left to perish. When we launched the OGP three years ago, the Occupy protest had just started a few miles south of here. Today, the scourge of inequality and how it denies us opportunity and aspiration continues. We were inspired then by the Arab Spring, by the people who stood up to dictators and insisted on voice and dignity. But while the significance of that moment remains, repression reigns. Across the world, including in some OGP countries, journalists are beaten, dissenters locked up, organizations shut down. We can craft legalistic arguments for why this cannot be our concern, but history will see through its prejudice and moral contradiction. There is nothing inevitable about the opening of government or the closing of civic space. It rests upon what we choose to do. The path to progress is fraught with setbacks and uncertainty. The OGP has its limits, but I know of no other platform that offers so much possibility for reimagining government. If we put our mind and our heart to it, it can become so much more. The progress we will make will keep up our spirits and allow us to reach into our better selves. But we do not keep going because of the certitude of success. We persevere because we choose to care and we understand that real change takes time. My father is 79 years old. My daughter is 10 and my son 12. I hope that one day when my children are blessed enough to talk with their children, they will be able to say, be careful of fire. Deep water can be dangerous. Learn to swim. And as for government, it belongs to you. It is your friend. Make it work. Make it better. Thank you.